Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar here in Geneva, Switzerland for Watches and Wonders 2024. And I wanted to just get in front of camera very quickly. We just saw the unveiling of the new Rolex model. So this is going to be a quick download for all of you so you know what was just released. Rolex just announced these watches. So this is fresh off the press. So just wanted to get in front of camera, share some of the basic information so you guys know. But in addition to that, share some of my thoughts at the end, maybe some opinions, as well as just kind of analyzing what Rolex did this year because it is kind of an interesting year, not what anybody expected. Uh, so we can talk about that a little bit more too. So one of the main points of speculation leading up to the show this year was the GMT Master II. Was there going to be a Coke bezel format? A lot of different ideas and what people were predicting, but what we were greeted with instead was a new GMT Master II in stainless steel with a Jubilee and an oyster bracelet as an option with a black and gray bezel insert. This comes with a green GMT hand, kind of returning back to form of that 2007 116710LN, 40 millimeter case, 70 hour power reserve, coming with that 3285 movement on the inside. Starting prices for these come at 10,200 Swiss francs. We don't have global pricing just yet. That starts on an oyster and then a couple hundred francs more for it on the Jubilee. Moving on to the next watch here, we have a new 1908. So this was the new collection that was unveiled in 2023. Returning to this traditional form of classic watchmaking when Rolex traditionally is going to be going for more of the sports approach. This had open case backs, new calibers on the inside, but this year we get a new dial color and now a platinum case to go along with it. So Rolex is calling this an ice blue dial, but probably more than the color and why this is noteworthy is going to be the texture itself. So this is a guilloché dial. And according to Rolex, this is real rose engine work here. So being done by an artisan, not something that we typically associate with Rolex, the art of guilloché. So to see it in this collection, I think furthers this idea around what it was initially thought to be. More of the traditional watchmaking positioned at a higher end within their price segment and contrasting from the many sports watches within their collection. Automatic Rolex 7140 caliber on the inside, 39 millimeter case, and retails just under 30,000 Swiss francs. So when you're diving deep in the ocean, I know probably what you think is, oh, I need a, a gold watch to accompany me on these journeys. Well, Rolex has you covered there with the new Deep Sea. This Deep Sea comes with an 18 karat yellow gold case and bracelet, 3,900 meters of water resistance to go along with it, 44 millimeter case. Also the bezel and the compression ring of that ring lock system are both coming in ceramic and work in tandem with the lacquer dial to keep the contrast high with that powdered yellow text that you see at six o'clock. Helium escape valve on the nine o'clock side of the case. Rolex 3235 sits inside the watch, boasts many of the standard suite of features, including 70 hours of power reserve, superlative chronometer with an accuracy standard of minus two to plus two seconds a day, blue parachrome hair spring, and their newer ball bearing system for their winding mass. Kind of strange combination with the utility of a deep sea, but then also getting this 18 karat yellow gold case. Moving along, we also have some new sky dwellers to talk about. So these two new sky dwellers come with 18 karat gold cases while also sporting a Jubilee bracelet. This is actually the first time a gold sky dweller has a gold Jubilee bracelet to go along with it. 18 Everose gold version is going to have a charcoal sunburst dial. And then the 18 karat yellow gold is going to have this stark white dial to complement. From there, pretty much the same as what we've seen previously from these models. 24 hour center ring on the dial with calendar function, 42 millimeter case, 100 meters of water resistance, 9,000 series movement on the inside. This one specifically the 9002 and working in tandem with the bezel and the crown for time setting functions. So from 42 millimeters down to 40 millimeters and 36 millimeters, let's talk a little bit more about the day date versions that were released. So leading up to the show, we saw some teasing from Rolex from the sign profile looked mostly like either a day date or a date just. Well, we got our answer with the unveiling of some new day dates. So there's some newness to the 40 millimeter day dates and the 36 millimeter day dates. So first looking at the 40 millimeter case, we have some ombre dials now being unveiled within this case format. It comes with a slate dial that has this vignette effect darkening at its perimeter being paired with faceted hour markers. The other dial of note is the 40 millimeter case with a white mother of pearl. And then looking at the 36 millimeters, we have a very conventional 18 karat yellow gold case and bracelet with a white lacquer dial. I think this one looks very clean. And then the Date 36 18 karat ever rose gold with a blue green dial. We saw this dial unveiled last year with the Sky Dweller with 10 baguette cut diamonds marking the hours in the area the complication is not taking up the space and then 60 cut diamonds on the bezel. Inside the 3255 70 hour power reserve, 100 meters 
millimeters of water resistance. And to conclude, we probably have the wildest watches of the bunch with some new Daytonas. So two new models here, both come in 18 karat white gold, both opposing each other in their contrasting mother of pearl formats. One version, white mother of pearl dial with chronograph registers and black mother of pearl being put on an Oyster Flex bracelet. Then the other take is a direct inverse with the black mother of pearl being that backdrop for the dial with white mother of pearl counters to go along with it, with this version being paired with an Oyster bracelet. Along with their case material, they match with their use of 36 brilliant cut diamonds set on the bezel and then also have the 4131 caliber on the inside introduced last year with the update to the Daytona. And at the time of recording this video and right at the launch of the show, which Rolex does every single year, this was it. This is what was unveiled from Rolex. So one thing that stands out to me immediately is just what was released compared to maybe what people were expecting. Now Rolex always does, I think, shift away from what people are typically expecting when people try to make their predictions. It's never correct. That's why I don't typically just do it anymore. They are very secretive about how they will roll things out, what they're ultimately going to do. But the interesting thing for me is one stainless steel model within this collection. I mean, most of these products are not mass market, commercially viable watches that I would think most Rolex lovers are gonna be looking at. These are a lot of precious metal options, different takes, a bit more daring in terms of their price and also positioning. But Rolex, in terms of the products that they're making, are making products for a wide variety of different buyers. One of the considerations I had when looking at the release here is maybe this was part of their strategy to go for products that are not gonna be stepping on the toes of different products that they already have and where their wait list probably are most likely at with their steel models. So with releasing more precious metal options, that might not create this clog in the system for some of these wait lists and people that are waiting and have inquired interest in some of these stainless steel models. The black and gray GMT Master II, is that what people were expecting? No, and it's very simple. It's very plain in terms of its approach. Still a very nice looking watch and probably near the top here in terms of my personal interest. Uh, but that was my initial takeaway here. Looking at this list of product, it's not the same year as what we've seen in the past from Rolex. It's very much positioned around precious metal rather than the conventional stainless steel. Last year, we saw the release of a new collection, some updates with the Daytona, Titanium making this big announcement within the Yachtmaster. There was a lot going on, and not to even mention, we had the puzzle models and the celebration models. So we had weird and zany, we had the conventional approach. So it was hitting on all fronts. This year is more centralized in what it's going for. I think it was a route too that many people were probably not anticipating, myself included. Last year, we saw the discontinuation of the Milgauss. There was also a discontinuation this year. And one of the shortest discontinuations I can think of across the industry with the discontinuation of the Le Mans Rolex Daytona. This was released in the middle of last year, and not even a year later, it's already gone. So what do I think about Rolex this year? Kind of a strange release of watches. Doesn't seem like it's connecting with the general public of collectors, but I have to think that Rolex has some reasoning behind this. And my thought is maybe this is telling us a little bit more about what they're trying to do. Maybe it's to actually answer the call for more of these stainless steel watches where it doesn't get continuously clogged up with many people are expressing this interest. That's just speculation. Nobody knows for sure, uh, but not the year I was expecting. Uh, there definitely are some splashes in here that I like. I like the new GMT Master II. I like the day dates. 1908 is interesting, although the customer base is not the typical customer base probably that looks at Rolex and it's very saturated with the competition here, uh, but to get a guichet dial from Rolex, pretty different. But all right guys, that's my take here and just a quick rundown of what is new with Rolex in 2024. What do you think of this new lineup of watches? Do you have a favorite? Do you like this lineup of watches? I'd love to see some comments down below. This is brand new information, so I haven't really seen the public discourse quite yet around these watches. I just wanted to get in front of camera and give you guys uh, my quick download of some of the information. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe. We'll have more great watches and wonders content, have some interviews lined up, uh, many other things around the show that we're gonna be covering. So be sure to be subscribed here, as well as following on Instagram and checking out our website for additional articles and coverage. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.